In this video, we will do the first three transactions to help give you an idea of how to get started with the SUA project. So remember, before you actually do a transaction, look down here and see the flowchart that is associated with it. So it says, follow the flowchart on page 21. So pull out your flowcharts, go to page 21, and this one's actually involved with cash receipts and it's a deposit validation. So look down this flowchart so you have a good idea of exactly what you need to do for this transaction. Over here, look to the left of the transaction before you actually do it and see if it says yes or no. If it says yes, which this one does, you are required to prepare or modify documents from the loose document set for this event. If it says no, that means you are not required to. So for this transaction, you receive validated deposit receipt, which is document number 11, from the bank for $7,931.96 for a deposit made on December 14th. So pull out this document, which is number 11, right here, and it's for the amount of $7,931.96, like it says here, and it's on December 14th, so they actually match up. Now on the flowchart, it says take that deposit receipt and agree it to the cash pre-list. The cash pre-list is document number 9, so take that out. And here on December 14th, these two amounts right here add up to $7,931.96, so they are reconciled. So on here you actually have agreed deposit receipt and pre-list to Cash Receipts Journal. Now you're going to take these two documents and you're going to file them in the temporary folder numerically. So you take out your temporary folder, you're going to file these two documents in the temporary folder. And so that's it for the first transaction. Now for the second transaction, you look to the left again, it says yes, you are going to modify a document. And you ordered the following inventory on account from Velocity Sporting Goods using purchase order number 328, which is document number 16. And you see, these are the amounts that you ordered and the description of what you actually ordered over here. So now pull out document number 16. write the amounts of what you ordered over here and the description. So you ordered a pad, a bag, a pump, and a kit. Well now you need to actually pull out the price list which is at the back of the transactions list. And it's going to give you the item number over here. So for the basketball pull pad, the item number is BB019. And for the bag, it is BB538. And you actually have the cost over here, what each item costs. So for the pull pad, it's $94. And so you're going to write these on uh, the purchase order. You see right here, you have the product number that you wrote and the actual cost for each of them. And now you're actually going to follow the flowchart on page 22 for the purchase order. your oral requisition, you actually prepared the pre-number checks, which you already did, and it says you have two of them. That's because there's actual carbon copy on the bottom of the purchase order that you've been working on. So you keep those attached until the purchase order is approved and signed by Kramer. So down here you actually sign as Kramer, and you approve the amounts, and once you've signed as Kramer, that's when you pull out the original copy from the carbon copy. So now you actually have two purchase orders, as you see here, and you're going to actually send one of them to the supplier, so you're going to pull out the tab that says mail given to outsiders, right here, and it doesn't matter which one you actually, which copy you send to the supplier, so we're going to go ahead and send this carbon copy off to the supplier, and the other one is sent to the temporary folder chronologically, so you take out your temporary folder you're going to file this in the temporary folder. And 
that is it for the second transaction. Oh. Alright, now so for the third transaction, it says you borrowed $80,000 from First American Bank and Trust by issuing a two-year note payable, which is document number 14, so take out document number 14, with a stated annual interest rate of 6%. Check number 545, which is document number 8, so take out document number 8, for $80,000. Remember first, we're going to look at the flow chart on page 21 for recording and depositing. So here's page 21. So we're going to receive the check, which is document number 8. Right here, document number 8. You're going to restrictively endorse the check. And what restrictively endorse means on the back of the check, you're going to write for deposit only. And that is in the reference book, and I believe also on the transactions list where it tells you to do that. So it's restrictively endorsed. Now you're also going to use a customer purchase order. But in this case, it's actually a note payable and a loan you're taking out. So there is no customer purchase order to go with it. So there's only going to be the check here. And you're going to enter it on the cash receipts pre-list. So take out the cash receipts pre-list. December 16th, and you're going to write First American Bank. The purpose, it's not a cash sale, and it's not an accounts receivable collection, but it's a loan, so it goes under other. The check number is 545. Remember, it's a loan, so there's no invoice number. No amount on the invoice, but the amount received is $80,000. So you're going to write that there. Now back to the flow chart. And so right here, it says the cash receipts pre-list, we're going to follow this down, and you make an entry in the cash receipts journal and accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. Now we're not going to have to use the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger because it's a loan, remember? So there's no accounts receivable, so we're only going to make an entry in the cash receipts journal. So take out the cash receipts journal. It's December 16th, it's a note from First Bank in the amount of 80000 so cash is going to be debited for 80000 and the credit is going to be the account number 21,000. You get the account number from document number 2, which is right here. And you see that a notes payable is 21,000 right there. So that's the amount, the account number you're going to write. And the amount is 80,000. And remember, it's always a good idea to keep a uh, T account for these. So cash, remember you're going to debit for 80,000. And notes payable will be credited for 80,000. So that's it for the journal entry. And you're going to file the cash receipts pre-list in the temporary folder. So cash receipts pre-list temporary folder and file that away. And now, so the check, it says one here, so you go over here to deposit with the check. Prepare a bank deposit slip for each day's receipts. So the bank deposit slip, if you pull out your documents folder, right here, you see that the bank deposit slip is document number 10. So pull out document number 10. And so on here it says prepare the bank deposit slip for each day's receipts. So you're actually going to write the day, which is, and so it's December 16th, it's the end of the day, this is the only check, so this is the total, which is 80000 So $80,000 is the total. So you're going to take your check and the bank deposit slip and you're going to send it to the bank. So here's your check and bank deposit slip and you take out the shipping banking folder and you send it away. And that's it for this and also document number 14 which shows the actual notes payable. You're going to file this away in accounting. So that's it for the third transaction, and that is it for our SUA series. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and good luck on the SUA.